Hello and welcome to another TLDR EU video. Catalonia is a 32,000 square kilometre region in the northeast of Spain and is home to the city of Barcelona and over 7.7 .7 million people. The region is very contentious though, with many in this autonomous community keen to break away from the rest of Spain and form their own independent nation. So in this video, we're going to discuss the Catalan independence movement, going all the way back to its formation in 1922, then explain the state of the movement today and why this has become a major issue in the last few weeks. Before we start though, there's about a week left on our big February Patreon push, so if you do want to help us out, then now's your time. That's because on top of all of the standard Patreon perks, like the ability to vote on video topics, early access to videos, and exclusive live events, everyone who signs up for a tier $10 or above this month gets an exclusive golden pin badge for free. These will never be for sale, and you have to sign up before the end of February. If you want to claim yours, then sign up now. There's a link in the description. Thanks for supporting independent journalism and TLDR news. Let's begin by rolling the clock back to the very start of the Catalan independence movement. Following the rise of separatist causes and the Catalan Renaissance in the late 1800s, demand for increased autonomy in Catalonia was extremely high, and various factors led to a rise in Catalan nationalism. In 1914, Spain did grant Catalonia a degree of autonomy by allowing for the formation of municipal commonwealths. This was largely a symbolic gesture, as the Commonwealth of Catalonia had no real substantive power advantages over the individual provincial councils, but it was, for the independence movement, the first step on a long path to full autonomy by consolidating representation for the Catalan people. Well, it would have been the first step were it not for the installation of Miguel Primo de Rivera in a coup d'etat in September 1923. In order to consolidate his dictatorial role, he dissolved Parliament, and in 1925, suppressed and subsequently also dissolved the Commonwealth. However, this forced dissolution played right into the hands of separatists, and led to the formation of a left-wing bloc, the Republican Left of Catalonia, which still exists to this day. With the ERC gaining an immense amount of support, the Catalan Republic was proclaimed in 1931. A statute that gave Catalonia significant autonomy was overwhelmingly supported in the region. And, well, this is where a bit of deja vu comes into play, because just five years later, the Spanish Civil War starts, and when General Franco seized power, he more or less nullified the statute of autonomy. It would take nearly 40 years after the death of Franco for some semblance of autonomy to return, because following his death in 1978, Spain adopted a new constitution that provided for 17 autonomous communities, including Catalonia, and in 1979, a new statute of autonomy for Catalonia was adopted. So far so good for those supporting independence, well that was until 2003. Because at that point, the ERC entered into a government and drafted a new statute of autonomy that was later approved in 2006. However, this statute was controversial with the Spanish Parliament, who removed a series of articles from the statute, which only increased tensions between the two sides. From there, though, calls for independence balloon, leading to the modern movement we know today. Almost immediately after being ratified by Catalan voters, the Popular Party challenged the statute, taking the case to Spain's constitutional court. Over the course of four years, it carefully analysed the text of the statute, before striking down 14 and curtailing a further 27 of the statute's 223 articles. However, what set the starting gun for events that would succeed the ruling was the following declaration with the court effectively arguing that Catalonia is a nationality, not a nation. The Economist stated at the time that for a decision that took four years to reach, the rewriting of Catalonia's controversial autonomy charter ordered by Spain's constitutional court on June 28th was surprisingly light-handed. We don't normally call people out on things like this, but boy were they wrong. Following the ruling, Artur Mas, then president of Catalonia, pledged to hold an independence referendum if his party won re-election with a sizeable majority. 
Something it did in the aftermath of snap elections called during a breakdown of talks between Catalonia and Madrid. So, in 2014, a non-binding referendum was held in which 80.7% of voters answered yes to both questions on the table. For many voters, independence from Spain was the only way to preserve Catalan culture, history, identity and language, and the unwillingness of Madrid to even contemplate a legally binding referendum on independence adds to the feelings that they were trapped, and an independent Catalonia would make a stronger Catalonia. This, however, was directly contradicted by Unionists, who argued that now more than ever, we need to be breaking down barriers and borders, creating a common community, not erecting defences. The main problem for those seeking independence, though, was that the 2014 referendum had been ruled unconstitutional by Spain's constitutional court before the vote even happened, something that ultimately led to Artemas being convicted by Spain's High Court for disobeying the Constitutional Court for going ahead with the referendum. Mas was subsequently barred from holding public office for two years, paving the way for his successor to announce a binding referendum on independence on the 1st of October 2017. The now-famed referendum in October 2017 was also ruled as unconstitutional, with the court arguing that the law Catalonia's parliament passed in order to hold the referendum violated the principle of the supremacy of the Spanish constitution, national sovereignty, and the indissoluble unity of the nation. In turn, during the campaign itself, the Spanish Civil Guard ordered the takedown of websites promoting the referendum, with thousands of police officers being deployed. The referendum nonetheless went ahead, 43% of the electorate turned out, and 90% voted yes to the question on whether Catalonia should become independent. With political unrest growing and a declaration of independence on the cards, Spain's then Prime Minister triggered the nuclear option, Article 155 of the Spanish Constitution, the suspension of Catalonia's autonomous status and the imposition of direct rule. Charges of rebellion, sedition, and embezzlement were all laid against Catalonia's leader and his cabinet, leading to European arrest warrants being issued against them. Despite this, though, the movement continued, though not without some issues. In a, in a poll conducted by the Catalan regional government back in November 2019, just 41.9% of Catalan citizens remained in favour of independence, with 48.8% rejecting it. More recent signs don't exactly provide much in the way of clarity either. Catalonia held regional elections. Your first question probably being, well, who won? Anti or pro-independence parties? Well, frustratingly, the answer is, in a way, both. The Unionist Socialists Party of Catalonia, the regional wing of the Prime Minister's Socialist Workers' Party, managed to win the popular vote with 23% of the vote and 33 seats. Though this doesn't give them enough seats to form a government, and they don't have many allies who could help. The leader of the ERC ruled out working with the socialists, a requirement if they hoped to form a government, saying that they wouldn't work together even if Madrid suddenly decided to pardon jailed separatist leaders. Talking to the Reuters news agency, the party's leader said, I would like to send a message to European authorities. The results are clear. We, the pro-independence parties, have a majority. We've reached more than 50% of the popular vote. The Catalan people have spoken. The time has come to negotiate a referendum on self-determination. This all comes in the light of the fact that pro-independence parties increased their presence in the parliament. ERC, GXCAT and the Popular Unity candidacy together now control 74 out of the 135 seats, compared to just 70 beforehand. The three parties also now amassed more than 50% of the popular vote, something they can and will use to illustrate continued support for independence. The ERC's leader, talking to Politico, is clear that he wishes to form a government that would seek to negotiate a binding referendum and apply the Scottish way to the issue of independence. Whether they'll end up with the same result as Scotland, though, is anyone's guess. By the way, we're thinking of doing a series on contentious borders and disputed regions, both in Europe and around the world. So if you'd like to see that, then like this video and comment below which disputed regions we should discuss next. 
Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when we release more videos in this series and more generally. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.